Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Random Pets Laboratory, where we are going to be mixing and matching all sorts of different animal genes in order to see what kind of curious crossbreed creatures we can create. And today is going to be so exciting! You guys, you guys! Okay, grab your lab coats and get ready to help me out with those petri dishes, slap on your safety goggles, and get ready to mix the DNA of the largest feline in the world, the tiger, a beautiful and glorious tiger named Ivy, who is so stunning. Oh my gosh, this is from Pug Owned on The Sims 4 Gallery. No custom content even needed because she just creates such amazing wild animal mixes. I absolutely adore this. And we're gonna be crossbreeding the largest cat that exists, which is indeed the tiger species pound for pound and like from whisker to tail they are the largest cats in the world even bigger than lions for some reason i always think lions are going to be bigger but no my friends it is the tiger who is much much larger and we're going to be crossbreeding this beautiful tiger named ivy with the smallest canine in the world with a little fennec fox who is the smallest canine species in the world which i think is just so exciting that was a great suggestion from you guys oh man shadow uh oh skelly it was skelly's i believe skelly is the one who suggested that and i just fell in love with that idea and we have had such amazing finnick fox and such amazing tiger mixes in the past i'm sure this one is going to be just as exciting and definitely get me very excited to start working on all of our planet zoo adventures again too oh my it's been so busy but all right friends so let's go ahead and get started i hope some of you will go ahead and decide to help out our desert loving finnick fox and some of you guys will go ahead and decide to head down the hallway to collect the DNA from our jungle loving tall grass loving tiger they both exist in real life in very very different biomes I really love on these two animals in particular that you can see how their patterning actually is reflective of where they usually live the patterns on a tiger actually help it blend in so perfectly in the tall grasses where they live so that they can sneak up on their prey you would think that a tiger with its bright orange coloring would actually stand out to the prey items that they hunt but surprisingly my friends a lot of the prey items that they hunt well i say items they're animals they're desperate deer who are trying to flee for their lives but those deer actually don't have the cones in their eyes to be able to see the orange coloring of the tiger. So mix that together with the stripes that they have on them and let the tiger lurk through the grass and kaboom, you've got a perfect predator. So a perfect predator, you might say. So that's why the tiger looks like it does, because as evolution, random genetics, mutations, and time passed over millennia and millennia, then eventually the surviving tigers who were able to breed the best looked like this. And meanwhile, for the fennec fox, having those big giant ears helps keep it very cool in the hot desert sands where it lives. And it also has to do with its coloring to try to deflect the heat of the sun from above and keep it nice and cool down below. Oh, I just love how the more you look at each of the creatures that exist in this world, you can actually see a story of the survival and struggles of their ancestors spanning through thousands and thousands, millions of years. Oh, isn't it just amazing? But all right, now that you guys have gone ahead and gathered up whatever DNA, let me know if you're Team Fiddick Fox or Team Tiger today. Let's start mixing it together and putting together some new crossbreed creations. All right, first one up. Actually, I would love to know. Oh, you're so cute! Not the one we're gonna have, but so cute. I would actually love to know if you guys were my lab assistants, like, what would you want to be working on today? What, what do you think your favorite thing to do in the laboratory would be? Because I, I sort of really love that idea. That's it's really cute. But all right, let's mix together the tiger and finnick fox to get a little tiny tiger. Welcome to Sundu, which is such a cute name. Sundu, welcome, welcome. You are going to be a tiger finnick fox. I think you inherited the finnick fox ears. I don't know what may give it away, but I'm pretty sure you have the finnick fox ears. And you, okay, no, but you guys, look, I know it's fun to do some crossbreeds, but you need to not slip the cow genes in while we're trying to breed the cat and the canine, okay? Like, it doesn't need to produce dairy. 
Sundu, you're actually going to be aggressive, a troublemaker, and vocal, which actually sounds like a perfect mix. I wonder if it would sound like a tiger roar or like a fennec fox bark. That's an adorable thought. But we'll have to wait and see if little Sundu is going to grow up to be a huge tiger or a tiny little fennec fox who will inherit the fennec fox ears. I don't know what I want more, like a tiny tiger with giant fennec fox ears, or do I want a giant like fennec fox colored tiger. The options are um, going to be kind of interesting to see. But all right, Sundu, you go ahead and rest in the puppy play moment. Also, Sundu, thank you. I do think a dragon and poodle crossbreed would be very cool to see. And then we're going to go ahead and our next little one popping out of the petri dish is... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't expect this patterning. Okay. This is actually going to be... Dun, 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 dun. Pinky! All right, so this is going to be a little Pinky. Welcome, welcome. And then we want to try... Pinky, you say that doing a fox and a griffin would be really cool. And I actually think that would be fun. I have my notes. I, I got my little notepad out and I'm writing down the little notes of your guys' experiment uh, suggestions. You have so many wonderful, curious ideas after all. And Pinky, you are going to be a couch potato who is adventurous and a bit of a troublemaker. I also think you inherited the ears. So we're kind of like getting two for two on the uh, like fennec ears so far. That's really exciting. All right, next Petri dish puppy after some of you guys. And all you need to do in order to become a Petri dish pup is go ahead and leave a comment down below. And you can give suggestions. You could just give name suggestions. You could just say hi. And then you have a chance of becoming... Oh, another tiger! Okay, the tiger genes are really strong this time. And this one is going to be Star. Welcome, Star. You're actually Star Wolf. You know what? We'll go ahead and give you the whole name. Star Wolf. And Star Wolf, you're going to be stubborn, loyal, and very hairy, which sounds amazing. Also, you say you have some spared dragon genes we should use to make dragon poodles. That's actually the third time I have seen somebody suggest dragon poodles, so I'm going to, like, mark that. You guys really want to see a dragon poodle. That's a cool idea. All right, but we've got more puppies to go here. Let me pull up. Da, 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 da. Ooh, pretty eyes. Not the ones we're going to get, but pretty eyes. Come on, Fennec Fox. Yes. Okay, I kind of wanted to have like at least one that was patterned like a Fennec Fox. And welcome to little Grizz. Grizz, welcome. How are you doing today? Oh, you're so cute. Wow. Okay, that's going to be cool to see if we actually end up with like tiger sized Fennec Fox here. Grizz, you can't produce wool, so we're going to try again. Grizz, you're going to be a sleuth who is playful and adventurous, which sounds just oh so adorable. And you think Sunny Bunny, who decided, asked for the name Grizz. Sunny Bunny, you say a panda and a dragon. You guys really are feeling the dragon thing. And lately, a lot of you guys have been like, Wings of Fire, Wings of Fire, Siri. Uh, and I don't know what that's all about, but my niece is even going, Wings of Fire, Auntie Siri. Uh, so I guess we're going to really look into dragons at this rate. This is fascinating. But all right, little Finnick Fox patterning on this pup. Excellent, excellent. Let's go ahead and pick up the Potato Empress, who also has a dragon avatar. I think you guys are really feeling dragons lately. This is this is fascinating. All right, but Sweet Potato Empress, if you would be so kind to add in this little drop of Fennec Jean. Ooh, okay, that's actually a tiger face with a Fennec like coloration. We're gonna have to see what. Here, we're gonna do Sweet Potato. There we go. Sweet Potato is a ridiculously adorable name, actually. I kind of want to get a guinea pig one day and just name it Sweet Potato, because that sounds amazing. And you suggest a wolf and fennec fox mix, which sounds fantastic. And by the way, you're going to be a stubborn troublemaker who is loyal. Huh. <laughs> well, to each their own, to each their own. All right, let's go ahead and get the very last of the Petri dish pups today. Okay, you guys are gonna, ooh, look at that coloration. That's so cool. <laughs> you guys are gonna love this, but this is actually Thomas. Thomas, welcome. Oh, wow, look at that. We have like a lighter variation on the Phoenix Fox coloring right there. Um, okay, okay. And uh, Thomas, 
you actually suggest having so many llama mixes. I just want to take a moment to say, holy cow, I think you like llamas, like holy llama, I should say, because you suggest a llama dragon, a llama Hyrulean wolf, a llama tiger, a llama unicorn, a llama lion. A llama lion sounds amazing for the alliteration for uh, nothing else. Oh, and you want Karumi as a name suggestion. Okay. All right, we'll do, this is Karumi. Uh, let's see, Karumi, there we go. And then we're going to go ahead and Kurumi is going to be a loyal, hairy, active little pup. Uh, and you also suggest, uh, as my lab assistant, having a llama raccoon, a llama husky, a llama Easter bunny, a llama snow leopard, and a bunny with a wolf prey predator. Wow. You guys, those sound like such amazing mixes. I definitely want to do some of those. That's going to be so fun. But for today, let's go ahead and see if our little fennec foxes are going to be tiny tigers with giant ears, or if they're going to be extremely large tigers or fennec foxes with giant ears. And actually, we're split kind of half and half, which I really like for the coloration. Pinky is a variation. And then Karumi is a variation, but then we have two who are tiger mixes and two who are finnick fox mixes, which I think is just a really great outcome for our experiment. And Sundu, you're up first. Are you going to be a tiny tiger or a big one? <gasps> Sundu! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this is so much cuter than I thought it would be. I love working with the finnick foxes. You guys, look at that tail. Oh my goodness, Sundu. Okay, I think Sundu has won. Sundu, you're you're amazing. You're so precious. Look at those ears. This is another one of those like really weird laboratory experiments I kind of want to end up in my Sims 4 legacies because it's so freaking cute. <laughs> All right, so we've got Sundu. And then we've also got Pinky. So Pinky, what are you going to grow up to be? Oh! <gasps> Pinky, you're huge! With tiny pink eyes, which I think is hilarious. You don't have dragon genetics, at least not this time. And oh my gosh, this is so cool! <laughs> All right, Pinky. So there you go. You've got some tiger stripes down the back. You are extremely fluffy like a tiger and you've got gigantic ears, but you look kind of like a dog from the canine side of the family. I could see how you could be a bit of a troublemaker, but I do see how you, um, you, you, you look really awesome actually. Didn't expect that from a tiger and a finnick fox. Next up, we've got Star Wolf, tiny tiger, big tiger. <laughs> Another tiny tiger with teensy ears. And look at the muscles on this one, representing the extremely muscular body that the tigers do bring to their DNA. And then we've got little Grizz. Oh! Grizz, I think you and Sundu have won my heart. Oh my gosh, look at those small little ears. Look at how small they are. I didn't even think that going the opposite direction with these teensy ears could be so cute. You almost look like a Shiba Inu. Wow. Oh, wow. Actually, a Finnick Fox and a Shiba Inu? <gasps> if we could have a curly tail. Ah! Okay, that's going to have to be one of our next experiments, too. This is I love seeing where curiosity will take us. This is so much fun. All right, next up is Sweet Potato. Are you going to be a little potato like my guinea pig or a big potato? My, you know, future... Okay, you're a big one! <laughs> but look at that amazing, amazing, uh, just I love the way the ears look down, that beautiful coloration. I'm sorry, you can't have a tiger tail. You guys are slipping tiger genetics in while I wasn't looking because of all of the, ti the like drag or dragon genes in when I wasn't looking, weren't you? Because of all the dragon talk. I, I, I see what you guys are doing there. Sweet Potato, you look amazing. And finally, we have little Karumi. <laughs> little Karumi is not so little. <laughs> Kurumi has the gigantic Finnick Fox ears with a giant body and beautiful cream coloring. There we go, you guys. Holy cow. I have to admit, I think that Sundu and Grizz actually completely have my heart at the moment, but I love this mix. I really do. And I love all of the amazing suggestions that you guys have tossed my way, keeping our laboratory experiments going. So keep it up. Leave your suggestions down below, your names, whatever you would like to do. And then uh, let me know which one you think was our favorite mix this time and I will see you for more curious crossbreed creations next time so be sure to subscribe if you would like to join along on this and literally thousands more adventures uh, but most importantly my friends stay curious and I'll see you guys next time bye bye